Birth in the animal world is one of the greatest mysteries of all time. It's the inherent process of renewal that sustains life on the planet. But how exactly does it happen in the animal world? Which births can give you goosebumps? And which ones are extraordinary and unique? Let's take a look. In this episode, I'll show you the most unusual animal births that will impress you. Let's go! Animal births that give you goosebumps Sometimes life begins with a fall from a height. This is how elephants are born. A baby weighing 198 to 264 pounds literally falls out of its mother's womb. At this point, it's wrapped in a protective membrane that softens the impact of the fall. The female helps feed the baby for four years and continues to care for it for six years after giving birth. It's not much if you consider that an elephant pregnancy lasts about two years. Stingray litters range from 5 to 15 newborns. Although stingrays are ovoviparous species, pregnancy does not take place in the same way as in mammals. The developing embryo receives nutrients not through the placenta but from the egg yolk. As soon as the supply runs out, the female begins to secrete a special nutrient fluid that acts as milk. The babies hatch even before they leave their mother's body. As soon as they're born, they begin an independent life. As you can see, the process is not the same as in mammals and not the same as in fish. Stingrays have their own unique reproductive mechanism. Baby dolphins emerge from their mother's body with their tails forward. They have to work the tail very quickly to surface and make the first breath of air in life immediately after birth. The female assists its baby in this. Dolphins have an extremely high infant mortality rate. Newborn babies are completely dependent on their mother. They get their nutrients by feeding on its milk. The size of a baby whale depends on the size of its mother's body. As a rule, their body weight is about a ton or several tons. Gray whale babies are smaller than blue whale babies. Despite their outward resemblance to fish, whales are mammals and are viviparous because babies are born free of their eggshells. The fetal life lasts from 10 to 16 months, depending on the species. Unlike most mammals, the fetus leaves the mother's body with its tail forward. This helps keep the baby from getting drowned in the water. Immediately after giving birth, the female pushes the baby to the surface of the water so it can get its first breath of air. The young whale stays close to its mother for about two years, after which it reaches maturity. Similar relationships are characteristic of giraffes. Females trust their mothers so much that they try to give birth in the same places where they were born themselves and even in the places where their grandmothers gave birth to their mothers. These places become maternity wards for many generations. Giraffes are the tallest land dwellers and this has a significant effect on the giving birth process. When a calf's born, it first sticks out its front legs, then its nose and head. Within an hour, it leaves its mother's body. But before it takes its first breath, it has to fall from a height of about six and a half feet. Tallness is one of the reasons why female giraffes give birth standing up. The calf emerges from its mother's body with its front legs forward. The newborns are up to 5.9 feet tall, which is about the same height as an average European male. Orangutans reproduce in much the same way as humans. Pregnancy lasts eight and a half months, almost as long as in humans. Newborns are completely dependent on their mother. Like newborn human babies, they have a very weak neck which must be constantly supported. After birth, the female clears the infant's airways of mucus and presses it against its body. It does all this instinctively. In rabbits, pregnancy lasts about a month, so a female rabbit can produce several litters over the course of a year. Rabbit babies look like moving hairballs. If you have rabbits and you notice something like this in your yard, your rabbits have most likely had offspring. Rabbits use wool and soft, dry grass as nest-building material. Rabbits are rather secretive creatures. Before giving birth, the female always tries to find a secluded place. Do you think that's it for today? Of course not. Let's move on to the second part of this episode, in which I'll show animals giving birth in the most incredible ways. Males carrying babies, the most selfless mothers in the animal world, and simple, unique births. All of that and more are further in this episode. Who gives birth in the most incredible ways? The female anaconda, while pregnant, finds a deep puddle and stays in it until it gives birth. Pregnancy lasts from five to nine months. The number of individuals in a brood can reach as few as six or as many as 40 young. 
Newborn snakes almost immediately enter an independent life and begin to explore the world around them. In yellowhead jawfish, it's the males who carry their offspring. The female reproduces the eggs, the male fertilizes them and places them in its mouth, using it as an incubator. After the birth of fry, the male continues to take care of them by keeping them in its mouth. In this way, the male protects the babies from danger, as it can always escape to a safe place with the offspring in its mouth. The common Suriname toad, or star-fingered toad, is known for its flat body shape. But it has another interesting feature. Unlike most land dwellers, it carries babies not inside the body but outside. Females have cavities on their backs into which they place their eggs. Three to four months after fertilization, the babies hatch and leave the eggs by moving around on their mother's back. Kangaroo joeys are born as early as one month after conception, but newborns are not yet adapted to life. The body size of newborn joeys doesn't exceed 0.9 inches. Immediately after birth, the joey climbs up its mother's body and crawls into the marsupium. After a few months, the joey grows up and leaves the marsupium. The giant panda demonstrates an equally interesting way of reproduction. This mechanism resembles the reproduction characteristic of the pomegranate tree. Like newborn human babies, newly born panda cubs are completely helpless. They have no color and are completely blind. After the cub is born, the female is completely devoted to caring for it. It nurses and cares for the baby for several days, not moving a step away from it and not being able to take a snack or a sip of water. A maternity leave would certainly do female pandas good. Kiwi birds lay very large eggs. Imagine a female giving birth to a baby whose height would correspond to a four-year-old child. Approximately this ratio is observed between the body size of the female and the egg. During the bearing period, the female consumes three times as much food as usual. Three days before laying, the bird stops eating because the egg takes up so much space in its body. Sea urchins are incredibly fecund and can lay up to 20 million eggs. Of course, only some of them survive. The female and male release a cloud of cells into the water. Within hours, those cells that do not fall prey to predators begin to become fertilized and turn into spherical creatures covered in tiny hairs. Then they begin to form a skeleton. At this stage, they're ready to reproduce. Generally, animals reproduce either by laying eggs or by producing live babies. Jackson's chameleon can reproduce both ways. A brood can have up to 30 individuals. The female carries the eggs inside its body without laying them, unlike most oviparous species. Tigresses are true masters of pregnancy disguise. Despite their relatively short gestational period of three and a half months, they're able to hide their big belly until the stage when they're 10 to 12 days away from giving birth. It's during these days that they're busy finding and setting up a place to give birth and care for their offspring. A litter usually contains two to three cubs, but sometimes it reaches seven cubs. As a rule, the interval between births is 18 to 22 months. It's difficult for a female shingleback lizard to carry offspring. As a rule, one or two babies are born. It would seem that there's nothing wrong with this, but it should be taken into account that the total weight of the babies is one-third of the female's weight. Imagine a female giving birth to a baby that would correspond to a seven-year-old child. That's about how the giving birth process of this lizard is. Sloths spend most of their time in the treetops. They give birth to their cubs in a very unusual way. The female hangs from a branch, holding onto it with its forelegs. In this position, the birth takes place. The cub climbs onto its mother's chest and clings to it. Barnacle geese lay their eggs on the cliffs at a height of 393 feet, which is approximately the height of a 40-story building. Immediately after hatching, the chicks face the problem of a lack of food. There's no vegetation on the rocks. After a few days, they begin to jump out of the nest, trying to make a soft landing. The seahorse is a very unusual fish. As a rule, females carry their offspring. However, seahorses do it differently. Nine to 45 days before hatching, the future father of the family carries the eggs in a special cavity. During the birth of offspring, the male opens the sinus and pushes the babies out. Octopuses procreate only once in a lifetime. 
the male octopus has a limb that's designed to fertilize females. Once the eggs are laid, the female proceeds to create a current around them with which it cleans them and protects them from predators. In hippos, pregnancy lasts eight months. Before giving birth to their offspring, the females leave the bloat for two weeks. During this period, they need to build a strong bond with their calves. They are born in the water and immediately learn to swim. Naked mole rats are extremely prolific creatures. They form colonies headed by queens. The queen is the only female with the right to procreate. The litters of first-time mothers can have up to 27 babies. It's the maximum number among animals. Porcupines are known for the sharp spines that cover their bodies. Fetuses in utero have soft hairs instead of spines. However, they begin to harden and sharpen almost immediately after birth when they come into direct contact with air. <laughs> That's all, guys. What do you think is the ideal gestational age? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.